Welcome to The Short Score, your weekly update of rope and news from around the industry, where you can find the latest on the sport from the pro rodeo ranks to the jackpot world. I'm Taylor Vollen, and I'm your host. Hey there, Ropers. It's Taylor. I hope you're ready for a good weekend. We're back on The Short Score with another Jake and Clay episode. Don't forget that you can find the videos for all of these audio clips at ropen.com, so make sure to sign up today if you haven't yet. How did the reaching game develop over time and who was responsible? On this bonus Ropen.com tips episode, Jake and Clay discuss the evolution of heading over time. It's always bounced back and forth, though. That's just kind of the flow of what's happened in, in rodeo. And like the years of, like when we first came in, it was a lot of one-headers, little old fair rodeos that added $250 and 500 added and this and that. And some of the big rodeos like Denver and, and uh, uh, Salinas and uh, things like that were, were multiple head. But then rodeo started to kind of change into a lot of two head and a, and a short. And so in that era, you know, Jake's style, Jake could either, he could reach or he had a really good jackpot go close style. It's like he had both games, that's what made him dominate so, so well. And so when they started moving to that, it was like right down our alley because, I mean, his short game was just, but then you had guys that come on like Matt Tyler and Charles Pogue and guys like that that, that came in with that style and had some really, really good horses. And there were some really formidable teams in that kind of format. And then, uh, and then it seemed like, you know, speed come along and he had both games. But at the first he didn't, he just had the long game. And I remember telling him, you know, that long game's good. I said, but, but Charles Pogue's gonna kick your butt all summer long because that's, that, and that's in his wheelhouse now. And you know, he really took that to heart. He went and bought that horse from Bob McClellan, old Bob, and he worked on the short game and he got the short game down good. And then he, then they, him and Rich just dominated because he, he had both games like Jake had had for so many years. So, but it all bounces back and forth. Now it's kind of going back to, you know, one headers with a lot of money added and then the formats down there in the winter where you progress, progress, and then you get down to the one header. Well, that's just how rodeo's always been. It's always kind of ebbed and flowed back and forth to find the format that kind of works for each rodeo, you know. And you just have to adapt because that's where the money's at. So it don't matter what they do, you know. Jump one off the top of the house and hit the yard and jump over the creek. If that's where the money is, then that's what you better start figuring out how to do. Well, for me, the you know the stage of the game in my career, you know I I obviously like the longer scores. You know, have a good horse, go catch, catch a lot of steers. You know, the, the thing that I don't like about the way it is right now, you know, if I was a spectator and I went to a rodeo, I mean, you know, you see the headers just swing the box and throw. You might go watch a performance and not even see anybody turn a steer in the team roping, you know, with the one header. So there's not really a strategy of it can, it can make, the, it can make the, the event not look so well. Uh, and and the guys, what they're doing nowadays, I mean, my goodness, how fast they rope the steer. It's just phenomenal how, but it, it just almost seems like, and there's a, I mean, my hat's off to them, you know, and 
not only that, but you know, the healers, I mean, the header might throw and stick it on him right across the line, but the healer's gonna throw just as fast as he is. And so the times are just crazy fast. And it just, it just makes it harder to win. And those guys are, you know, there's a handful of those guys that are really good at it. But, you know, some of them, like Clay says, you know, you got to be, you got to be multiple dimensional, you know, that, because there's going to be times, you know, where you just need to catch one and they can't, uh, they're not able to go do that.